source input. You know, this this you can it's completely portable. You can take it on the go if you do want to. Um, uh, the the other contrasting thing between transparent binocular platforms versus something like the RIP is that uh, field of view is going to be very different. At least today, um, we've got a 23 degree field of view, but when you can use distortion optics to have a hundred you know to have a hundred degree field of view, it lends itself to very different use cases. Um, and then obviously the M100 by Fusix is very much like a glass. It's binocular. It's kind of below your field of view, or for just pop-up information. But uh, does anyone have a question on kind of the different platforms or? Yes. More of a comment on the M100. Even though it's uh, opaque, you can't see through it. Yeah. It's kind of transparent in that you know, just the, just that you kind of see through it. Because you have two eyes and one eye looking around. As far as your development and some of the ideas that are going to be judged upon, uh, there's going to be kind of, uh, and Mike's going to get into this a little bit more, there's going to be, um, you know, how well are you using the smart glasses and the Vario platform, you know, in your idea. Um, so for smart glasses, specifically one of the real interesting use cases is that it's hands free. Um, so the question that I always ask when I look at different apps um, or projects is, why would I not use a phone or tablet? So there's a lot of use cases where you can easily just pick up your phone and, and, and do something with it. But um, for instance, like a, a training example um, where I need to go or for maintenance, you know, I need my hands to be able to do activities while seeing the overlaid information. Or if I have kind of like the, this over the shoulder coach um, uh, with, like a remote person providing me instructions on how to do something and they're using my camera feed and overlaying things in my field of view to be able to uh, help maintain an item. You know, that, that's an application where smart glasses work, provides a lot of value relative to like a phone or tablet. Um, the other thing with a hands-free is alternative inputs, you know. Uh, do you guys have experience doing voice, gesture, head tracking, eye tracking? Um, there's a lot of HCI um, elements that still haven't been figured out um, with the Smart Glasses platform. And we're looking to explore that. Um, so for Moverio specifically, um, what are some of the things that really differentiate our product and you know, what could be built into an app um, that would different, uh, you know, make it ideal for our contest is that the content is in your field of view. Um, you know, so that you're looking at some of these overlay concepts. And this is why, um, you know, I think it's great that uh, we have Matayo support um, to be able to help with um, using their platform to, to help you, uh, you know, start to work with, with augmented reality concepts in your field of view. Um, utilizing transparency. So one thing with um, tablets or phones and, and augmented reality is that you hold up the tablet, it uses the camera, it grabs the feed of the camera and then it overlays you know, digital information over the camera feed. Um, and you see that in your tablet. The, the interesting thing with smart glasses is since you can see through it, um, you don't want that, you don't necessarily want that camera feed rebroadcasted into your glasses because that would introduce <laughs> challenge number one, which would be that potentially your camera is not one to one with reality. So you have this small version of reality <laughs> rebroadcasted into your field of view with the digital overlaid information. And we do have an example of that that we're going to show later um, while you're developing. Um, so one thing you could do is render the camera feed black such that it appears as transparent in the smart glasses and then just render the digital content in your space. Um, so you know there's kind of two options from a development perspective that I think we think are interesting is that A, through software, um, you could try to figure out how to do one-to-one, -one, you know, by doing the right zoom and placement of, of a webcam on the barrier of glasses. Or two, you could render um, the background black of the camera feed and just broadcast some of the projected image. Um, the other thing with our with a smart glasses and a Vario platform is you have a 360 degree canvas. So unlike a tablet where you're just looking in front of you and you're only interacting in this one space, think of being able to um, 
that the whole world is your canvas, and as you move your head around, you know, you sweep your head around, that the, the content could, you know, change. Um, uh, consider uh, focus and field of view. So these, this, this kind of gets into some real nuances of um, transparent uh, displays that I, I don't think you, you get to, you don't really get an appreciation of until you wear them. So uh, focus, at least for Moverio and a lot of the smart glasses out there, the focus is set very far. So uh, if your application is focusing, is really concentrating on doing something up close, you have the challenge of, it's a, it's a smaller image, you know, in your field of view when you're working up close. And then the, the pitch of that image, the digital content is going to kind of, the focus of it is going to be far away. So, you know, we'd like to see, hey, are there ways of correcting for that using um, side-by-side -side 3D to bring it closer to you? Um, does that work? Or, you know, does it make sense just to focus on applications where, you know, the focus may be further out? You know, just some questions that, uh, that I was thinking through the other night. Um, obviously, you can um, do side-by-side -side 3D, and the Moveri also runs the full Android OS. But for the, the sake of you know, this event, let's just assume that you know, using, uh, showing a concept you know, that's running off of your, your own machine is, is sufficient as and just saying that conceptually, this will work on a next generation Moveri that's running a you know, newer version of um, the other thing I did want to quickly touch on um, well the other thing I wanted to touch on with the smart glasses landscape is that we will be offering demos um, once you split out into your groups and start um, developing your concepts uh, we will have demos of Google Glass we've got a couple units uh, Great. we've got uh, an Oculus Rift demo, and we've got um, a lot of application-specific de demos that were built on Moverio um, that we'll be showing off around the room. So feel free to break out and, and take a look at those demos as well. What was the last thing on that, that list? It was, side by side. we run the full Android OS. Um, one of the key issues for superimposing is, that, is the head tracking stuff. Can you say anything about that? I mean, if you're going to superimpose something that relates to the real world environment, you got to keep track of yes. So, in order to so let me uh, just kind of uh, address that by saying that um, we understand that, and we are taking that into our product roadmap considerations. Um, you know, in the near term, you know, I think we think using a camera, you know, is how we can do it. You know, it's, it's kind of a simple way of doing it today, a camera and a marker, but we are looking at, um, we are looking into that very seriously. So, um, in your concepts uh, for your pitches, um, you know, if you want to assume that there is head tracking in there, that's not an uh, outline issue. Like your, yes. It's quite possible. Um, I just want to make the comment that before I knew you were going to have the uh, video input, I was looking at the, doing remote control using PNC or something. So that would be another option for people. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have run into some latency issues um, when trying alternative ways of uh, uh, pushing video uh, to, the, to the glasses, but um, it's definitely an option. Yeah. 